So why study English at Ashoka? We do English quite differently from many parts of the world and indeed many parts of India. First of all, we don't insist that English is only English. It's a conversation between many types of language, uh, many places in the world. If you want to think about issues and adventures, if you want to think about horizons that might not have been open to you as yet, if you want to think about uh, the areas in which we specialize, if you want to think about uh, caste, if you want to think about sexuality, if you want to think about Shakespeare, if you want to think about travel literature, if you want to think about a whole variety of subjects we feel passionately about. And if you feel passionately about um, climbing those intellectual mountains and getting a doctorate at the end of it, then come here. But it's not just one discipline. English is uh, a discipline that allows us to get outside the habit of thinking in disciplines. Because to read a text, one always enters an imaginative universe in which the tools to make sense of it require thinking with history, philosophy, psychology, economics, sociology, anthropology, even science. My reason for choosing uh, to come here and to pursue my PhD here in English is because the program is deeply interdisciplinary and it also uh, places a large emphasis on creativity and rigour. And my dissertation committee as well has been very supportive. Uh, Professor Gil Harris, Professor Ravindran Sri Ramachandran from the Sociology Department and uh, Professor Rhonda Corbin sander from Amherst College. I think uh, uh, the faculty members and the kind of mentorship that we receive from senior scholars in the field has been really, really enriching. And why I chose Ashoka is because um, of the faculty and the courses available here. It's phenomenal and also the financial support is amazing and the infrastructure is very good. For one thing, I think we encourage transgression and fluidity when it comes to different kinds of boundaries of period, of genre and form, of approach, of archive. Thinking, for instance, of a graduate course I taught uh, recently called Orientalisms, in which we moved between literary and historical archives. Uh, we asked questions uh, that pertain to uh, the 18th century, the 19th century, but even uh, today we looked at, you know, Disney films and all kinds of things. So that kind of mess and fun and fluidity, I think, makes it an exciting place to be. And I chose Ashoka because of the brilliant work done by the department, which I think speaks for itself. Also because I really liked the way the program was structured. A great advantage to our PhD program is that you get to take small seminars in many different topics. So. Even if you want to specialize, say, in literature of the 21st century, you would also uh, be able to, and in fact, be asked to take courses in earlier literature from the medieval period and forward. One of the real advantages to our classes is, is that these are small seminar style classes, so no more than 20 students. You would be <coughs> sitting with a professor, sharing your ideas, coming up with new approaches to the text, generating ideas with your professors. So there's a lot of independent thinking and independent research encouraged. Some of the graduate courses that I teach at Ashoka are Acts of Faith, which thinks through the relationship between faith, religion and literature, and violence in South Asian literatures. I also teach courses on film theory. I'm Rita Kotari and I work on vernacular literatures, Indian literature, caste, partition, language, politics, and I also run the Center for Translation. And there is a very, very inseparable link that exists between what we teach and what we write about, the centers we run, the courses we do, and PhD students are encouraged to become a part of this entire range of exciting things here. Uh, another attribute, I think, is the focus on pedagogy, both in terms of the kind of attention you would get from uh, faculty members here um, and the way that we've structured the curriculum to lead you through, uh, you know, different stages to initiate you into what it means to be a serious scholar of literature, but also because you get to teach. In your first year, you would do a teaching practicum, 
uh, and in your second semester you would be a teaching assistant for a course. Uh, in your second year you would lead discussion sections for undergraduate students uh, and finally you would get the chance to teach your own class on a topic of your choice. So we hope to prepare you not only for the research aspects of the doctoral degree and your professional career after, but also uh, for the teaching work. As I always say to my students, every story is a migrant. It's traveled to get to us. It's traveled through many cultures, through many languages, through many different ways of thinking. If you come and study with us at Ashoka, you too will become a traveler. Are you ready to take a journey? I'm aware that it's a big decision to do a PhD and then to want to do it at a good place, in a meaningful sort of a manner, to find a good supervisor. All these are difficult decisions. But I do want to tell you that Ashoka is an extremely fecund and fertile terrain where new ideas are encouraged, students are nurtured, we spend a lot of time with students on a one-to-one -one basis, and all of us come with a range of subjects we work on. My interest lies in exploring modernity in Kashmiri literature, so uh, my focus will be on a few poets that uh, wrote in the decades between 1930s and 1950s. If you are an intellectually curious, adventurous person uh, who wants to think sort of beyond traditional boundaries of, let's say, chronology, uh, where studying medieval literature is different from studying Renaissance literature, and all these chronologies are also then mapped onto geographies, so suddenly medieval British literature is different from medieval Indian literature and so on and so forth, then this is perhaps not the place for you. But if you want to actually think about how uh, the very idea of the medieval might in fact be a colonial imposition, for instance. Or if you want to think about the idea that the word British itself is something that hides or papers over more differences than it cares to announce openly, then this is the place for you. My research interests lie in the realms of post-colonial literature, diaspora studies, cultural studies, um, or the intersections between them. Um, and I am focusing on Indian identity and how um, Indian identity translates or representations of Indian identity translate across transnational lines um, and uh, into different mediums, especially pop culture. My work majorly tussles with questions of gender and sexuality, but largely through the ambit of theatre and performance studies. I think it's important to mention the incredible support I've received from my advisor, Professor Rita Kotari, who is a translation theorist and a translator who's written about caste. She has made me see, uh, approach the problem of caste through a lens that I have really not thought about as uh, uh, you know, a way to look for caste, to look at it as a problem of translation, translation as an experience that one embodies when one is translating, when one is living in a multilingual setup like India. My engagement here with scholars and professors such as Professor Madhvi Menon, Professor Abir Bazaz, Professor uh, Alexander Phillips, and even Professor Jonathan Gil Harris has not only challenged and reframed the questions I came here with, but it's also invigorated them. So you're most welcome to apply and I really look forward to seeing you. Thank you. <laughs>